everybody. Um, today we're going to do lesson plan six, um, term two, grade seven. Um, and we're going to look at multiply a common fraction with a whole number. Um, this also links to worksheet 36 in the DBE book. Um, and I'm going to go back um, and we can also see how it links then to the caps. Then I'm going to ask you to pause at the dictionary. And what you need to do here is you need to look at how did the learners learn about one quarter of 24. We know one quarter multiplied by 24 previously and how they're doing it now. Um, so previously what we did is we made use of diagrams and then the learners saw then that one quarter of 24 by looking at one quarter of the diagram and I could see then it's six. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say one quarter of 24. We Then the of means multiply. So we're going to say one quarter multiply by 24. But we want to change this whole number into a fraction. So we're going to say one quarter multiplied by 24 over one. Because 24 divided by one still gives us 24. We then going to multiply the top numbers and the bottom numbers. And we're going to get 24 divided by 4. We're going to divide it and get 6. Yes, we can also take a different approach where at this stage where we're going to say we can then divide this 4 into or we can see what number can divide into 4 that can also can divide in 24. We can see it's 4, so we can say 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 24 divided by 4 is 6. So we got 1 over 1 and 6 over 1. If we multiply it, it will give us also 6. So um, in this lesson, we can use this, we're going to use this approach, but you can also use the second approach or the second method from this step. Um, it depends how you're doing it at your school or how you want to do it as a parent. Remember again is we also need to teach our children different methods because different methods help them later understand, maybe to understand other concepts. So if we only stick to one method, um, they only get used to one method and when they get stuck, they can't always solve the problems. So let's then start with the learner activity. So for the learner activity, we're going to do mental mathematics. And what you're going to do is you're going to ask the learners these 10 questions. Um, they can write it down the answers or they can answer it orally. So I want you now to pause and ask the learners. Welcome back. I'm then going to reveal the answers. So after revealing the answers, you can mark it or you can talk with your learner about this and to check if you got the right answers. Then we're going to start today's lesson. So today's lesson, um, we're going to look at sharing and grouping. Why do I look at these words? Because often learners get these type of word problems. And if they never did these things practically before in previous grades, they do start to struggle um, working with fractions, especially when it's in a word problem. So I'm going to say I have 24 apples. Now, here I show the drawings and you can show it to the learners but at this stage what we want to do is we want learners to form a picture of the 25 apples. So I give one quarter to my friend. How many apples did I give away? So what they do is they simply look at this picture. They know tw the, the number sentence will be 24 times a quarter or a quarter of 24, but because of the drawing, they can just look at it and say, okay, a quarter of 24 is six. So again, there's a reason why I'm going back to the representative level. It's just that we can revise and make double sure they understand what a fraction of a whole number means. A lot of times children can work with fractions when we divide something into equal pieces like a circle. But when it comes to fractions of a whole number, 
they might struggle if they can't see the picture. I want you to pause this and I want the learner to read through this and then explain it to in his or her own words. I'm going to go back to grouping. So grouping, I have 24 apples. I put one quarter of the apples in one group. So I need to know what is a quarter of the apples. So I need to know a quarter of the apples is six. How many groups of apples will I have? I will have four. Because at the beginning we said I put a quarter of the apples. So I want you to look at this. And the learner to look at this. Read it again. Look at the drawing and explain it. And then when you're done, I want you to explain then the difference between the two examples. It's time to pause. Welcome back. So I'm really going to work through these examples. So the first example, we already did um, something similar when we did the definitions. Um, so one third of 12. So we got one third. The of becomes a multiplication symbol. So it becomes multiplied by 12 over 1. Remember, we can not say 12 over 1 because 12 divided by 1 gives us 12. So now what we can do is we're going to multiply the top numbers and multiply the bottom numbers. Then we have 12 divided by 3 or 12 thirds. That line means divide. So we say 12 divided by 3 equals to 4. We can also get it as a question like this. What is 1 fifth of 25? Um, so we're going to say 1 fifth of 25, then 1 fifth multiply by 25 over 1. Again, is, look what happened with the of. It becomes a multiplication symbol. 25, 25 over 1, because 25 divided by 1 is the same as 25. I'm going to multiply the top numbers, and I go to multiply the bottom numbers, and I get 25 divided by 5. It's equal to 5. Again is, from here I can take a different approach. I can say, what can I divide into 5? That will also go into 25. It's 5. So this becomes a 1 and this becomes a 5. If I multiply it, it's 5. 1 times 5 is 5. And this is then a 1 times 1 is 1. 5 divided by 1 is 5. I'm going to explain the example number three. So we got three quarters of 16. So what we have here is three quarters times 16 over one. Remember, 16 divided by one is 16. The of becomes a multiplication symbol. When we multiply three times 16, it's 48. And four times one is four. 48 divided by four is 12. I'm going to explain the second method and I want you to think. So here what we can do is I can look at the 4 and the 16 and see what can go into the 4 that can also go into the 16. So I see 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1 and 16 divided by 4 is 4. So what I have here is I have 3 over 1 and 4 over 1. So 3 times 4 is 12 over 1. It means 12 divided by 1 is 12. I want you now to look at example 1, 2, 3 and first explain it how I did it using the examples that you can see. Then what I want you to do is I want you to explain it again but from this step here where I circle, I want you to change the method. Then here at this step, I want you to change the method and at this step I want you to change the method. Remember you still need to get the same answers. Good day. So we're going to look at a word problem. 
Now, this is a typical example of where we have some hidden numbers. So let's first look at the word problem. So at the, when we do a word problem, uh, we most of the time we first identify the question. Now, the, the method or the technique I'm going to use, it's one or thousands. There are so many different ways to solve word problems, but I'm going to show you one. So the first thing I do to ask, how many cupcakes is left? So we want to know that. So we're going to then identify the numbers. Now, to identify the numbers or the fractions, we got two thirds and seven. That we can see. But what we need to do is we also need to read the problem. So we can see if there are any hidden numbers. So my mother sold two thirds of her cupcakes. She baked seven dozen. So here we have our hidden number. It's seven dozen. You can see here. So seven dozen is seven times 12 equals to 84. We already know it's a dozen. So it's seven times 12 equals 84. So now the, uh, the number sentence must be my mother sold two-thirds of 84. So we're going to write it then as two-thirds times 84 over 1 because 84 divided by 1 is 84. Listen carefully again. I said my mom sold two-thirds of 84. So then we get this step. Again, what we can do is we can multiply the top numbers and the bottom numbers and we can divide it. Um, you probably need to use some short division techniques to come here. But you can also then see what can go in 3 that can also go into 84. Now remember, if we want to check if a number is divisible by 3, what do we do? We add the two digits. So if I add 8 plus 4, it gives me 12. Can I divide 12 by 3? Yes. So if I can divide 12 by 3, I would be able to divide 84 by 3. So I want you now to divide 84 by 3 and then do the rest of the calculations. Well done. So what we did now is we got now, because how many cupcakes is left? So my mother sold so many, so we need to see how many is left. So what we need to do is we need to say 84 minus 56 equals 28, and we got 25, oh sorry, 28 cupcakes left. I want you now to do the worksheet, the SA teacher worksheet or the DBE worksheet and complete all these. And then I also want you to complete all these word problems. Um, please read them carefully um, and make sure that you identify the question, all the numbers, all the hindered numbers. Look at the keywords. Then lastly, we always add an extra problem solving. So in this activity, you it's a choice if you want to do the extra problem solving. I always say practice makes perfect. So why not? Why not try to do this extra problem solving? Then the extra activities, the extra example, the Amisa examples, I always recommend that you do these um, because these are the type of questions that they usually ask in exam papers or test papers. Then we come to the consolidation where you're going to answer then if you answer yes you can carry on to the next lesson. If you've got a no you need to revisit, revise or contact SA teacher. Mm -hmm.